On today's show, we're gonna learn how to control a bunch of these with one of these. Ooh. Good morning and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three times a week show here at youtube.com slash photojoseph every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific, talking about photography, video, live streaming, all related things. This is the first, and as far as I know, still the only regularly scheduled live show talking about pure photography. Now, a lot of other YouTubers, photographers, friends of mine are doing live shows here and there, um, occasionally getting a little bit more regular about it, but uh, I still got the only multi-weekly show out there, so it's kind of fun. Which reads, just I just say that just to remind you all that you are watching a live show. If you're watching this and you're not watching it live, it was live, it was recorded live. So um, that's the way these things roll. So with that said, today we are talking about a flash, specifically in this case, the Panasonic Lumix flashes, but essentially the same thing I'm gonna show you is going to apply whether you're shooting with Canon or Nikon or Olympus or Sony, it's all basically the same. The menu's gonna be a little bit different, obviously, but the technology, the idea behind it is the same across all platforms. And, and I've done this with Canon, I've played with them with Nikon, um, I, it's, it's, they're all the same. So it's the same basic idea. And the idea is that we are going to use one of these, one flash, to control other flashes. So here's the basic premise of what happens. You take a flash and put it on your camera, and then you have other flashes and you set them up elsewhere in the room. So for example, I've got one back there. Um, this one's actually gonna end up back there and I've already got one up on the camera up here. That's gonna be the master. These are called the masters. Those are the slave units. And the idea behind the control is that from the camera itself, you can control the output of those other flashes. So if I've got the flash on the left and I wanna make it a little bit brighter, the flash on the right, I wanna make it a little bit darker, I can do that without having to run around back and forth through the flashes, constantly adjusting them. If you have worked in a studio with studio lights that are all manual studio lights, you know what it's like running around changing them. If you've worked with these small units before but didn't have the automatic control, you know that that running back and forth, back and forth can get a little tedious. So if you can actually make the changes from your camera, that's really, really freaking cool. And that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. That's what I'm gonna show you how to do. Uh, the essential idea behind this light being on the camera, the way it controls it, is through a series of pulses little light flashes that emanate out. And if you're shooting in fully automatic TTL mode through the lens mode, fully automatic, you will see a bunch of little flashes happen right before the picture is taken. Those flashes are not necessarily part of the picture. Those are just measuring the light before it actually takes the picture. This all happens very, very quickly, but that is what's actually happening. And I bring this up because of a very important point in that this light, well, let's, let's put this one down now. Let's say this light, the one that's on the camera, even if I turn this light off, even if I tell this light not to fire, you will still see it flash. And if you're not used to this, you're going, hold on a second, I told this thing not to fire, why is it firing? It's firing because that is how it communicates. It's a really important part of the process. This flash, the one that's on the camera, flashes to the other ones to talk to them, they flash back and forth, it's a little dance, they talk, and then the ones that are out there, ones that are out there, those fire to illuminate the image. They fire when the picture's actually taken, whereas this one will not. And that's a, that's a really important part of the process. So. You can control all the lights individually, you can control them all from here, and you can turn any of them on or off, up or down, including the one on the camera. Really, really important point. Now, you may think, well, hold on a second, if I gotta put this big, expensive flash on the camera and I'm not even using it, well, that's kind of a disappointment. And it, I get that. It can be ex an expensive route when you consider, okay, I want wireless communication from my camera to a remote flash. Even if I just want one flash, I have to have two flashes, even though I only want one, you do unless there are a couple of workarounds. If you have, uh, unfortunately, the G9 doesn't have it, none of the newest cameras have it, but some of the older Lumix cameras have a pop-up flash. Some Canon, some Nikon, some Olympus cameras have a pop-up flash. That little pop-up flash, while you may look at that and think, what is the point of that stupid little thing? It actually has a really good purpose. It can be used to control these other lights, which is great. So if your camera has a pop-up flash, check and see if your model will allow you to control your remote flashes using that built-in pop-up flash. And then you only need one of these to have that whole remote experience. You can also buy wireless triggers, uh, wireless meaning radio triggers. These are done by infrared, but uh, you can buy wireless triggers. And that's a whole separate kit. Other companies make those and uh, you can use those so you don't have to have an actual flash on the camera, but those wireless triggers tend to be pretty expensive too. So it might actually be more economical to buy just a flash. I'm getting down to a bit of a separate rabbit hole here, but there are advantages, of course, to having those these radio triggers. The primary differences being line of sight is not required. These have to actually see each other, whereas one that's radio can be around a corner, uh, 
past a wall, say you're shooting through a window and you want one on the inside or the outside of the house, the other side of the wall you are, you can use that. You can't do that with the light, uh, light emitting ones, the um, infrared ones, and also distance, range. You get more range with the, the radio transmitters than you do with LED or, or um, infrared. So, you know, there's differences there. But uh, in general, these lights have the infrared communication built in, and so you're essentially ready to go straight out of the box. So with that said, let's talk about how you set up the remote flash to start. What you have to do to the remote one, the one that's out there, to get it working. So let me uh, get this thing on camera here, get my close-up shot set up. And this is the Panasonic flash. So I, you'll notice up here, it says, let me tilt this a little better to see. It says mode RC, that means remote control. And so I push on the center button, and you'll see something starts flashing. And then this little wheel is, is a wheel and a joystick. So I would go up and over. Oh, there it is. It's on mode. It's flashing on mode. And I can cycle through the different modes on here, you know, automatic and slow sync and manual, and there's the multi-flash and so on. And if it's on the camera, TTL would come up. It doesn't come up when it's not on the camera. And eventually you cycle through and you find RC, remote control. Okay, so that's what I want there. I can change the zoom because this particular flash has a zoom head in it. So I can focus the light if I want to, wherever I want that to be. So I'll just set it kind of 50-ish. And then I'll pop down using a little joystick. And these are the two wireless controls that are really important. Channel, and then the next one is the group. So we'll start with channel. You have four channels on these lights, one, two, three, and four. Then, with, then beyond the channels, you have groups, groups A, B, and C. The idea behind the different channels it is, is that it is essentially an entirely different frequency, if you will. I can have a whole bunch of lights set to channel one, a bunch of lights on two, a bunch of lights on three, a bunch of lights on four. The camera controls either one, two, three, or four. It doesn't control them at the same time. The idea here being that you could either be have multiple photographers on location where you've got a bunch of lights set up and photographer one has bank one, photographer two's got bank two, channel two, and you can set it up that way. Or what I've actually done myself that's quite practical is if you have an environment where you're going to be moving around doing different shots in different locations, you can have my setup number one is channel one, setup number two is channel two. And then as you move from location one, setup one to location two, setup two, you change the camera. Okay, now I want to control lights on channel one. Now I want to control lights on channel two. I actually did this at a fashion show that I shot like 100 years ago where I set up three different sets of lights. And there's one for the runway, one for something at the end of the runway, and then one for something as they came off the runway. So anyway, um, as the models came down, I would switch the lights so that I was only firing the lights that I needed for each one of those setups. It's pretty cool that you can do this. Um, I've also seen it, uh, I've never done this myself, but I've seen it advertised or seen it uh, talked about where, let's say you've got a really busy executive headshot that you're doing. You've got the CEO, you've got him for five minutes and that's it. You got to get a bunch of different shots. So you set up your different locations, even in the same room with a series of lights on channels one, two, and three. And then the the CEO walks in, sit down for channel one, sit down for channel two, sit down for channel three, and off they go, and away you go. So that's a way you can use them as well. So that's the channels. And then the next part of it was the grouping. So I'm going to go back into the editing mode here. So I'm going to put this back to channel one because that's what my camera is set to right now. And then I'll go over to this second one here that says uh, group B right now. And I can do group C, A, or B on there. I'm going to put this one to B. And the idea behind this is you now have within your channel up to three different groups of light. And those groups can be controlled individually. And that's what we're going to see in the camera here momentarily. Where group A, you can tell it to go brighter or darker, group B, brighter, darker, and so on. So I've set this one to group B. The light that's already set up out there is already set for group A. And then from the camera, I will be able to control groups A and groups B separately. There's also a group C, um, which I, I'm not using right now. And then, of course, the one on the camera is its own on camera. It doesn't have a group number because it's just the one that's on the camera. So that's pretty much it. That's all you have to set up on the remote flash is set it into RC or remote control mode, choose your channel, in this case channel one, and choose the group. And the group, of course, is going to be very important because that's how you're, that's how the lights are grouped as you're adjusting them. So again, that's group A. This is group B. I'm going to go ahead and pop this thing on the light stand. Oh, one more thing. I'm going to pop this on the light stand. This front element here, the uh, it's a little close up here, this front part right here, that's where the communication happens. So this needs to be pointing at the camera where the other light, the controlling or the master light is. This is why, if you've ever wondered why heads spin all the way around, this isn't so that you can take a picture um, and illuminate yourself. <laughs> Don't do that. That's not for that reason. It is so that you can position a light like this pointing Let's say I'm the photographer, my subject is there, I want the light pointing at the subject, but I need this part of it pointing at me. Therefore, I can spin it around 180 degrees, and that's it. That's why that's there, in case you're ever wondering. So I've spun that around. I'm going to go stick this on the light stand over here. 
and just slide that in and lock it into place. And make sure my other light is still on. It is on, and it is on RC mode. Excellent. Group A and channel one. Perfect. OK, so that is all set. Now let's take a look at what we're doing in the camera itself. Let's bring up the controls for this and bring up this page. Here we go. All right, so here's the controls. I'm looking at the menu system on the camera. The flash itself is, um, is basically going to be automatically controlled. Whatever, when I set the mode in the camera, it's going to set the flash up the way it needs it. So I don't need to worry about setting up the flash itself, the one that's on the camera, for this. I just do, the, I'll do all the work in camera, which is what you can see on the menu system. So I go into the camera function, and I look for flash, which is, oh, where is it? Um, there it is. There it was on this camera. This is the G9. It's on page 205. And I turn on flash, or I hit flash, and you got your flash mode on here. And you scroll down, and you will find something called wireless. Let me just turn this off to start. Now, when it's off, that's going to be its default position. If I fire the flash now, those other ones are not going to get controlled. We are not controlling them. Obviously, on is what we want to do here. So we go into wireless, and we set it to on. And then all these other little things light up. So you have a couple options, wireless channel. Well, there's your four channels that we talked about, right? So if you've got channel one, two, three, or four, your setup one, two, three, or four, this is where you set that. So we're using channel one. Wireless FP, that's the high speed flash mode. We did a whole video, actually it was a double header video that I did on that a while ago. Um, we'll link to that up here. That was a really fun video series. If you haven't seen that, we did a bunch of stuff with the high speed flash and turning day into night type of a thing. Um, check out those videos, that's a lot of fun. But that's what the wireless FP is, we're not using that. Today, and then you have communication light. That's the light that's actually flashing the communication between the cameras. You can make that brighter or darker. Um, I think in general, leave it as low as you can, as low as it needs to be, because it uses less battery. I would advise. It's I. I just I don't know. I've never really taken off standard. I just leave it on standard. And then the last one is wireless setup, and this is where you take control over all the different lights. Now, if I hit this button, this brings up the bank that we're going to spend the rest of the the demo in here. Before I go through this, though, I want to point something out. At this point, I had to click several menus deep to get into this, which is obviously not cool, right? If I'm shooting, and then I go, oh, I want to change that, and I have to open up the menu, and OK, it's going to go back to flash where I was, and then I have to enable that, and I have to scroll down all the way down to wireless setup and pull that up. That's too many steps to get to to make my adjustments. So remember I showed you a while ago that on Lumix cameras, and I can't speak for other cameras here, but on the Lumix cameras, if you press and hold on one of the FN buttons, the custom FN buttons, then if you press and hold on it for a couple of seconds, it will pop up a menu allowing you to choose what that function button is going to do. In this case, on the G9, I have set the, the, the spinner dial on the back. I realize I don't have a close-up shot of this, but the spinner dial on the back is actually a rocker as well. If I press and hold on the down button on that, it brings up the controls that allows me to choose what menu I want to assign to it. And in this case, I have assigned wireless flash setup. So that means that when I'm working, all I have to do is push down on that, and it brings up the wireless flash setup, and now we're good to go. So pretty straightforward, right? We're going to take a look at the controls here, um, see what we can do with them. Before we do that, I just want to remind you folks of our value for value model that we have here on the show. If you have, if you feel like you have learned something from today's show, if you have taken value from today's show, then I would most certainly appreciate it if you would consider putting value back into the show. Uh, head over to photojoseph.com support. There's a lot of ways to support the show there via Patreon, PayPal, shopping at the affiliate store, uh, watching my training on lynda.com, or even hiring me directly if you have such a project. So that's something I would highly encourage you to do. Also, if you're interested in uh, travel and travel photography and having uh, incredible epic experiences, I'm taking a small group of people to India next year, January 30th, February 9th of 2019. You can learn all about this workshop at photojoseph.com slash India. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. It is going to be a massively, massively amount of, massively amount of, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good, and I will learn English before I get there, I promise. Uh, questions, by the way, if you have questions during the live show, pop them into the chat. I see people are doing that right now. We will do a quick Q&A afterwards and see, uh, see if I can answer your questions. Okay, so back to this. Let's bring this guy back up. So we're looking at the menu system in there. You can see I've got my external flash. That's the one that's on here, and then groups A, B, and C. So I am going to just leave it all as it is right now. It's on TTL, which is the fully automatic. TTL, by the way, stands for through the lens. It is more than a standard automatic because it effectively... Essentially what it does is it's taking a picture, you don't see that, not really, but it's kind of like taking a picture, measuring the amount of light that's coming from the different lights through the lens, the actual image, and then adjusting the lights as needed and deciding this is the output that you need and giving, uh, sending the uh, lights instructions to fire at that power. That's basically what's happening here. So it's kind of a really advanced fully automatic. This isn't new, this has been around forever and ever, but that's what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up, move the tripod over here. And obviously I'm not aiming to take a pretty picture here, 
we are quite literally just taking a picture of the studio when I have three lights involved. I've got the light on the camera, light bank A, which is one light, and light B. So let's take a look through the camera here, and I'll start by, again, all of them being on fully, uh, fully automatic, just zero EV, no adjustments, just going to push the button and see what we get. So we have a, this is a slightly illuminated room that is coming from the main flash on top, and then a bright spot on the black canvas and a bright spot on the white canvas. Okay, so now I go in and I adjust that. Let's go for, let's just start by turning off the external flash, the one on the camera. And let's see what kind of a difference we get here. It's not gonna be much, it's not gonna be much, but we're gonna see a slightly darker room there because of course the room is not being illuminated. The only light that's really exposing the shot, it's a pretty, what is it, such a 200th of a second shutter speed, I think, 125th at f5.6. So the only light that's exposing the image is coming from the flashes. So I just turned off the main flash so only those side flashes are going. Now let's take a look at adjusting those side flashes. So I go in here, pull down the menu, and I'm gonna say, let's take a group, that's the one on the left, and let's make it brighter. Let's take it up a, let's go two stops. So it's really, oh, let's go three stops. So it's really, really obvious. Okay, and I'm gonna take that picture. And now the A1, the one that's pointing at the dark canvas, is considerably, considerably brighter. I think if I, if I can switch back to, yeah, there we go. There's the previous shot. So there, the image has been basically properly exposed for that gray background. We're seeing that nicely. Here, I have blown that out, but the one on the right, the B light, has not changed. Pretty cool, right? So now let's go in and change the B group. Let's take the B group, and because we're pointing at white, let's take that down quite a bit. Let's take it at like minus two stops. And I'm going to go back to the A group and let's set that back to zero because zero is actually pretty good exposure for that and take that picture. So now you can see that the, right on, the light on the right, the right on the light, is considerably darker and is now exposing the white for a way that we can actually see the texture in it. Pretty cool, right? So that is all you have to do when it comes to adjusting these by simply wanting to say, oh, I want the left, uh, the group's A group lights to be a little bit brighter, a little bit darker, B group to a little, little lighter, a little darker. That's all you have to do, just adjust that. It's really, really straightforward and simple. Now, this is great for so many different types of work. If you're out in the field, if you're shooting, uh, let's say you're shooting a model out in the streets or something and you want to illuminate them and you want to have, um, not have to worry about adjusting the power output of the light as they take a little bit step closer or farther from the light, TTL mode is going to handle that automatically. It's going to handle it beautifully. If you're in the studio, however, I personally tend to prefer to work with manual settings on my lights. That's just me. I like to go manual on my lights. So I can do that from here as well. I can take complete control over the lights without having to run over the lights and make changes on them. I can do it all from here. So if we go back into this menu system, I will do that. I'll go ahead and, uh, where were we? I want to go to group A. And instead of TTL, I'm going to switch that over to manual. And then in here, I can set my power from, in this case, full power all the way down to 128. So let's just start at like, all right, let's start at uh, quarter power. First, let's go to quarter power to start, and we'll see what that gets me. And then I'm going to go to B group, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'll set B group to manual. And uh, well, it's already at half power, so we'll just leave it there. So now I've got quarter power on A. That's the ones on the left on the gray wall, and half power on B. That's the one on the white. Take a picture of there, and I see what I've got. So clearly both are too overexposed, but I have total manual control over it. So I go, okay, well, let's, let's bring this back up. Let's go to the A group and let's bring that one down quite a bit. We'll bring that down to like 128th, its lowest possible setting. Go to the B group, see where that is. We'll bring it all the way down as well up to the lowest possible setting, take that picture, and we can see what that looks like. So from here, I have that complete and total manual control, adjusting it in very finite increments to get it exactly the way I want. Now, of course, if your subject moves closer to the light, you're gonna have to compensate for that, which is why TTL is really handy. But if you're in a more controlled situation, you don't really have to worry about it, and that's all there is to it. So that's it. That is everything I wanted to show you. You take your light, put it into your remote light, put it into RC or remote control mode, pop the other light on your camera, go into the menu system, turn on the wireless control, and then jump in and start playing with it. Make this a little brighter, a little bit darker, and that's all there is to it. It's pretty straightforward. It's a lot of fun to play with. And uh, this is part of what I'm going to be doing in Chicago this weekend at the Out of Chicago Conference. We're going to be doing a little bit of playing with this. So that's why I kind of had all this set up and decided to do a show on it today. Speaking of the Out of Chicago Conference, I am leaving... Today is Wednesday. I'm leaving tomorrow morning for Chicago. Friday, I do intend to do a live show from Chicago. It might be at a different time just because of my schedule there. We'll see how it goes. I have plans for a show to do from the hotel, you know, as everything is all bandwidth permitting and all that. But hopefully, fingers crossed, everybody cross all your fingers for me, and hopefully I will see you guys Friday morning. Um, other than that, we are going to jump into the Q&A right now, and let's see if there's any questions that you would like answered that I can help you with about today's show or anything else you want to know.